All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to work on writing equations in the form y equals mx plus b. We worked on y equals mx plus b in the previous lesson. If you don't remember what that is, maybe go back and watch the other lesson. Just be like, oh, okay, what is y equals mx plus b? And just kind of remind yourself a little bit. So y equals mx plus b is something we call our slope y-intercept form of an equation. The reason we call it that is when you write an equation, the m is your slope value, and the b is your y-intercept value. And then we left y and x as y and x, right? Those are variables. They could be many different values just depending on different questions. So, for instance, if we had an equation like this, y equals 2x plus 3, I could say 2 is the slope, 3 is the y-intercept. It just tells me a bit about that graph. Cool. Let's get into looking at these equations and how they work. Question one, write the equation of a line passing through the point 0, 2 with a slope of 5 over 2. The first thing that's really important here is when they say write the equation, that means create an equation. All right, sometimes people read write and they're not sure what that means to write an equation. So you're going to create an equation. The first thing you have to do is figure out the format that you're going to create your equation in. The only format that we know is y equals mx plus b. We don't know any other forms. So that means everything we create is going to be in that form. The only way we can create that is if we know what m equals and if we know what b equals. For us, m is slope and the question told us the slope is 5 over 2. b however is the y-intercept and this question never said your y-intercept equals blah blah blah. What they did tell you though is that you're passing through this point meaning that this point is on the line and if you notice this thing has an x value equal to 0. Anytime you have an x value of equal to 0, that's actually telling you that this is the y-intercept. And it's just the y value that's the y-intercept when x equals 0. Again, we learned that in a previous lesson. So for us, our b value is 2. Now that I have this information, I can create this equation. So instead of m, it's 5 over 2 and then x, and then plus, and the b value is 2. y equals 5 over 2x plus 2. That's your equation. Kind of cool. Class example 2. Each line on the grid passes through points with integer coordinates. What that means is that when you see um, an intersection like this right here, that's an intersection, they're telling you it's perfect. It's right through the integer, meaning that it's right at like the number 8. It's not 8.1, it's not 8.5, right? You can assume it's the whole number. In each case, state the slope and y-intercept of the line and determine the equation of the line. So we have two different equations here. We have line 1, and we have line 2. Line 1. We need to state the slope and the y-intercept of the line. This is line 1 over here. I know that's line 1 because they gave me that little marker right there. Say L1. So if we want to start with, let's do the slope. Oh, sorry. The slope of line 1. That's your m value. Uh, to do that, it's rise over run. So pick two points on this graph. We'll pick that point right there and this point right here. It goes up one, one, two, three. So a rise of one, a run of three. It's one over three. Awesome. To do the y-intercept, we call that the b value. Looking at this graph, 
There's my y intercept. It's at negative 4. Now I can determine the equation, which also means create the equation. It's going to be in this form, y equals mx plus b. But instead of m, I'm going to put my slope, which is 1 over 3. Instead of b, I'm going to put minus 4. Notice that I'm not going to put plus minus 4 because a positive and a negative turns into a negative, so I'll just put minus 4. And that would be my equation. Awesome. Maybe pause this video and try line 2 on your own, so see if you can get it. Line 2 is this guy right here. So maybe see if you can do line 2 on your own. Wonderful. The first thing you had to do was calculate your slope. Slope is rise over run. I always like to work left to right. So I find two points on my graph. There's a point. There's a point. So I'll go one, two, three, because it was down, it's negative three. And then one, two, rise of negative three, run of two. I put R. Run of two. To calculate my B value, your B value is your y-intercept for this graph. It's right there, which is out 1, 2. To create my equation, it's going to be an mx plus b form. Instead of m, I'm putting negative 3 over 2. Instead of b, I'm putting plus 2. And that's my equation. An equation is complete when the only letters you have left are y and x. You shouldn't have any other letters sitting out there. Class example three. Determine the equation of the following lines. The line is parallel to this with the same y-intercept of this. Okay. So anytime I'm determining an equation, I need to be finding something that can go in the form y equals mx plus b. That means I need to find a y or an m value, and I need to find a b value. In this question, it tells me that the line is parallel to this thing. Parallel means same slope. So if my new equation needs to have the same slope as this equation, that means that this value right here, 1 over 3, should also be 1 over 3 on my new equation that I'm creating. Then if I keep reading the question, it says, and with the same y-intercept as this guy. So if I have the same y-intercept, that means I have the same b value, right? Because that is the y-intercept. So for us, that means our b value must be negative 7. And now that I have that information, I can create the equation y equals 1 over 3x minus 7. And that equation would have the same y-intercept and the same slope as the first one. Awesome. Part B. The line passing through 0, 7 and perpendicular to the line joining 2, comma, negative 6 and negative 5, comma, 0. Okay. Any question where we're determining an equation must always follow this format. Always. Let's start off with breaking this down into what m equals and into what b equals. Actually, I like to color code it, so I'll color code it again. We'll start with b, because it's the first part. It says the line passing through 0, 9. That is my y-intercept. I know it's my y-intercept because the x value is 0. So that means the y value is actually my y-intercept. The slope is much trickier in this question. It said, and perpendicular to the line joining these two spots. Perpendicular means it's the negative reciprocal which we did a few days ago. That means you need to take the slope that's in between those two points, make it negative, and flip the fraction. So the first thing we have to do is find out what is the slope between these two points. 
To do that, we use x1, y1, x2, y2. And we use our formula of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that will tell me my slope value. So y2 is 0 minus y1, which is negative 6. x2 is negative 5 minus x1, which is 2. That means the slope in between those two points would be 6 over negative 7. It's positive 6 because there's a double negative on the top, right? It's 0 minus negative 6. So minusing a negative turns positive. Now, remember, that's the slope in between these two points. We want to be perpendicular to those two points. So our slope needs to be flipped in opposite symbol. So instead of negative 6 over 7, it's now positive 7 over 6. And because we have our information, we have a y value and we have an m value. Sorry, we have an m value and a b value. We can now create our equation. My answer is y equals 7 over 6x and plus 9. In my experience, those questions, those... Uh, ones where they say you're perpendicular to this, passing through this point. That's one of the hardest questions you guys get, um, in my opinion. They're just very confusing. There's a lot of steps to it, a lot of things you have to remember. And you'll notice that with this unit is that there's a lot of little things that seem simple. But then you get a question like that. And there's like five little things you have to remember just to build up one big thing. And that makes it very hard to be able to do all those things and remember every little step just to get the right answer. So if that was confusing, that's okay. Just practice, practice, practice. Maybe rewatch it a couple of times and you'll get it. Okay. The diagram shows the display from a graphing calculator. The intercepts are integers. Determine the equation of the line. Okay. We don't typically do questions like this. However, we should. So it tells us here... Um, the window settings, which is important for us to figure out what's going on. And it also told us that the intercepts are integers, meaning that there's no decimals here. Everything is perfect. We'll start with our B value. Our B value is going to be this guy right here. But what is that? It looks like 2, but it's not 2. And the reason it's not 2 is because of their settings on their calculator. So I know this is going to be 0. And if that's zero, the scale, y scale, tells me what I'm counting by. So every little tick going up is worth seven. So this tick right here is actually seven, meaning that this tick right here is actually 14. So my y-intercept is 14. Awesome. Next thing we're going to try to figure out is our slope. Our slope is going to be rise over run, so we have to find another point on this graph. I'll pick it right here. And I have to figure out what the value of that point is. According to our graph, the x scale left to right is going up by fives. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20. And now I can do my slope. Because my slope will be a rise of 14 and a run of 20. So my slope is 14 over 20. And it's negative 14 because I went down. We can simplify that, right? Both of those values divide by 2. So it's negative 7 over 10. To create my equation, I have y equals negative 7 over 10, x plus 14. If you're not sure how I got that, it's because I'm following my formula, y equals mx plus b. Like that. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about vertical and horizontal lines. Uh, vertical and horizontal lines are quite easy. So looking at this, we're going to talk about stating the slope and all that stuff of these lines and see if we can't create some equations. This question will lead you through um, how to calculate slopes and y-intercepts of things and stuff like that for vertical and horizontal lines. But I really just don't enjoy showing it that way. I find it kind of confusing. Um, so instead... I'm going to show this in a different way. 
on this graph, we have two different lines that are both vertical. Those vertical or horizontal lines are right here. There's one here and there's one here. Line one and line two. And then we have a vertical line right here. And I'm just going to try to describe those lines first and then try to create an equation for it. So if I'm looking at L1, the first horizontal line, this guy right here, and I look at all the values on L1. So if I looked at all the little individual points. So for instance, if I looked at this point right here, that point has an X value of 1, a Y value of 4. If I look at this point right here, that has an X value of 1, 2, 3, 4, a Y value of 4. If I look at this point way out here, that point has an x value of negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7, positive 4. And if you kept looking at all of these points, pick another one, pick this one, you're going to notice that there's a trend. And that trend, hopefully, is that the y values are all 4. Right? Look at them. They're all 4. <laughs> So the best way to describe that line to me is that L1 is when y equals 4. And that's actually how I write the equation. I just say y equals 4. Seems kind of simple, but that's all you have to do. So it shows you all the different spots where y could be 4. That means for L2... If I look down here and I look at all these points, just pick all these random points, you're going to notice that you have negative 6 as your y value, and it keeps repeating. Every single point has the same y value of negative 6. And that's because this line, L2, is what happens when you have y equal to negative 6. Now, the reason it's being written that way, it is in slope-intercept form, technically. So these equations are y equals mx plus b. But with a horizontal line, you have no slope. The slope equals 0, which means you have no mx. All you have is y equals b. And that's why our equations look like this, y equals b. Our vertical lines don't have y-intercepts, uh, and their slope isn't equal to zero. A vertical line has a slope that is undefined, which really makes things confusing when you try calculating it. So all we're going to talk about is what we notice when we look at this line. If we were to pick a whole bunch of random points on this line and just wanted to write the values of it, the top point up here would be 1, 2, 3. That would be at negative 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, positive 3. Right below it, we would have negative 3, comma, 1. Down here, we would have negative 3, comma, negative 2. Way down here, we have negative 3, comma, negative 5. And what you should notice for these ones is that Vertical lines all have the same x value. They all have x equals negative 3. Like that. So if you want to write equations for vertical and horizontal lines, you only write one of the letters. For horizontal lines, horizontal lines, Our y equals a constant value. For vertical lines, they are x equals a constant value. And you just have to figure out what that value is that's repeating over and over and over and over again. Cool. We did do stuff, some stuff with like undefined slopes and vertical and horizontal lines earlier in the unit. Actually, I think it was the unit before. Um, so hopefully that wasn't too crazy.
it tells you right here. This is a good. So that's kind of our rule. Uh, y equals k, so y equals a number is for horizontal lines. Uh, x equals k, so x equals a number is for vertical lines. Okay. Last question here it says determine the equation of the line through the point negative two comma eight and parallel to the y axis, parallel to the x axis. So just to draw a little sketch here. Negative two comma eight would be negative two comma eight is way up here. We want to draw a point or a line that goes through that point and follows a couple different rules. The first one is we're going to be parallel to the y axis. That means uh, you have the same slope as the y axis, that's a vertical line. Right, you're straight up and down. So for us, we're talking about that. And that vertical line, we write as x equals. The way you figure out what the x value is, is by looking at the x value, the point it goes through, because that'll be the point that keeps repeating. So our answer is x equals negative 2. To figure out the horizontal line or parallel to the x-axis, you do that. That's parallel to the x-axis. Because it's a horizontal line now, I know it's going to be y equals, and it's going to be whatever that y value is on one of the points. For us, y equals 8. Wicked. That's radian equations in y equals mx plus b form. I hope you loved it. Uh, I hope I didn't, like blow your mind and have the most exciting thing ever if you want you can uh, like and subscribe to my next video you know maybe it'll bring you good luck for the next thousand years of your life uh, why watch netflix when you can watch mr kennedy's math videos so until next time i hope i see you soon take care of yourselves